Hey everybody, welcome to SpaceCast. I'm Josh. I'm here again with Anthony Colangelo from Main Engine Cutoff, the popular uh, podcast series. Appreciate you joining us here today. Absolutely. And we have the famous TS Kelsos again, Tracking Satellites Kelso. That's what the TS stands for. We've got to reuse that joke because it was a good one. <laughs> I think we, it was. Yeah. So today we're going to, it's uh, it's showtime. So TS is going to give us a little demo of a very cool new feature of Celeste Track, which we went over what Celeste Track is and where it's come from and how long it's been there in, in previous vi- videos. So if you haven't if you don't know, go watch those. But this time, we're going to show you how to do something really cool with Celeste Track and so, with some new features. TS, do you want to uh, walk us through what you're going to show here and give us a little bit of a quick tutorial right. on uh, Celeste Track? Sure. So uh, most of you that have used uh, Celeste Track before are familiar with what we do. And what we've been doing for almost 35 years is making sure that data for all the objects up in orbit are available, current. Uh, and as accurate as as they're pretended to be. Uh, but uh, what we've been trying to move to now is to make it easier for people to actually go out and use that data. So the challenge up to now has been that if you wanted to see where a satellite was in orbit, you had to go find your own software and you had to figure out how to get the data into that software and do whatever it was that you wanted to do. And, and of course, uh, many programs have issues with they may only work on one operating system or they're not really suitable for working in in some of the environments that we find ourselves working with today like phones and tablets and so we were looking for something that was uh, it was going to work on a variety of operating systems a variety of platforms and to make that powerful and so our our mission today is really to shorten the time from question to answer so we have lots of things going on in space as i'm sure most of you are already aware. And the question is, well, you know, help me understand that a little bit better. And so you may have some focused questions about, well, what is this satellite doing? Or what do these orbits look like? Or when can I go out and see a particular uh, satellite or group of satellites? And we're trying to make that easy to do. So if you go to the Celestrack homepage, celestrack.com, you'll notice pretty prominently right under the, the logo, is a banner for our new orbit visualization or orbit viz that we have on the site. And the goal is to be able to actually animate and interact with the full 18,000 object public catalog right directly in your browser. And so just in the time that it took to describe that, what we've done is we've downloaded uh, the code to do all of this in JavaScript. That's about a megabyte. We have a satellite catalog that does that provides metadata for all the objects that are up there. There's there's about 45,000 objects in it. That's about five meg that we download, and then whichever set of orbital data you're looking at. And right now we're looking at the full catalog. And so you'll see this image, and it's like, wow, that's that's a nice picture, but it's actually interactive. And so we can come over to the dial here, and we can control the speed. And uh, what we're looking at down here on the dial is we can see what speed factor we're running at. And so we're running at about 1,000 times real speed and then the frame rate. And we're targeting to be able to get about 30 frames a second to try to make this a seamless, interactive experience for the users. And so you can see right now the objects uh, primarily in LEO. You can see some things a little bit further out. And as we zoom out on it, we start seeing, uh, of course, I'm having a little bit of a problem with the glare from the monitors, but uh, we should be seeing the geo belt out yeah, there. See it out there on the left. We're, we're, we're blasting TS. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> Some lights try, right they're here. They're trying so to blind me. I think yeah. I should have worn my sunglasses. Trying to make you see, feel like you're at home in we're, Hawaii. We're, we're dazzling exactly. you. Yeah. <laughs> I usually do this on the beach. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, so you can see the geo objects, you know, floating around in in the orbit. And the idea is that you can not only, you know, increase or decrease the speed or go backwards from this. uh, You can run real time and you can even do things with the the slider at the bottom to control where you are in time. And uh, one of the nice features, uh, so this is written in cesium. This is an AGI technology that was developed some years ago. If you're familiar with cesium, you may be familiar with their time control. We've actually made some modifications of that. And one of the modifications we have is you can control the resolution of the time slider. So the default comes up as one day, but if for some reason 
you wanted to go through the data at a much quicker rate, you can actually do that by changing it to a week, a month, a year, and uh, really go through the information. We'll show you how that can be uh, useful here in a little bit. But um, if you wanted more info on how to build a globe like that for yourself, just go over to cesium.com and everything you need will be there. And so the, you know, the challenge for what we've been trying to do with this is uh, to make this so that it would run uh, seamlessly in the browser. And, and one of the challenges has been, how do you represent the data? And so initially, our first version of this, what we did was the typical approach where we took all the data for the objects we wanted to uh, interact with and then propagated them over some time span where you were limited to that time span for your analysis. And of course, the issue that you run into there is that most browsers are going to top out pretty quick on memory space to the point where you really can't do more than a couple of days. And so our, our developer, uh, TJ Curry, is the guy that works for me on doing this development. I tasked him with finding a way that we could do this on the fly. And so we actually, using some, some reasonably uh, new web technologies, we're using something called WebAssembly, where we take the actual uh, SGP4 code and put that directly in so that we're running it almost like a, a native application. And we're able to do propagation using the full SGP4 propagator with the most current TLEs and do that at things like 30 frames a second for 18,000 objects, which is pretty, it's pretty impressive. phenomenal, right? All right, so uh, I want to just show you really quickly uh, some of the features that we have in here. And so I'm going to just uh, reset the time to the current time. And I'll point out that up in the upper left, we've got uh, some options here. We have viewer options. One of the options is to do things like turn lighting on and off so you can see where the terminator is. Uh, another one, and I'm going to use this just to kind of show the difference later, is the reference frame. So the, most of the time we show orbits in the inertial frame because for the most part an orbit is fixed in space in, in inertial space, but there are times where we want to see uh, Earth fixed frame and we'll look at that here shortly too. But so you can, you can get into the main catalog, you can come up here and you can select the satellite catalog, you can search for objects. So you could do something like if you wanted to see where all the iridium satellites are, you can do that, and then it'll immediately filter down to where those are located. Whoops, trying to get zoomed in here so we can see some of them. And we can uh, select all those orbits on the page. Uh, we're color-coded, greener, operational. This is the original Iridium constellation. Greener, operational, orange or dead satellites, and gray are debris. Uh, we can deselect that and pick, you know, something else. We can do things like uh, just show me all the dead satellites in orbit. Just and real quick on the iridium thing, is it's something you told me we we're all not recording, which I didn't know about. There are no longer iridium flares. Correct. Yeah, the uh, iridium just deorbited or deboosted uh, the last operational satellite last week. And, and people are still coming to your site looking for the iridium stuff. Correct. So yeah. you don't, you no longer have to do that. There's, uh, there's nothing to see here. Please move along. <laughs> nothing to see here. <laughs> so you can, you can immediately see, you know, which satellites are dead. And surprisingly, there are a lot of them. In fact, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see out of the 18,000 objects, we have 2,500 of them are dead. You can do the same kind of thing for uh, rocket bodies, for example. Immediately filter on it. And if you noticed. Some things are very easy to see. So we see this train of satellites here. This is actually the latest Starlink launch. And if we click on any of those objects, you can see uh, which Starlink object it is. Uh, we can come over to the selected tag, or you can double click here, but we can click on this and then go directly into a mode where we're tracking along with that satellite. We wanna go back and turn everything on and then just animate around. That's probably a little bit too fast. But <laughs> <laughs> try, try not to make you uh, viewers at home nauseous here. But so you can get a sense for, for the power of the tool. And there's, there's lots and lots of capabilities in here, whether you're, you're doing just the basic visualization, you're trying to find out where a satellite is. So you can type in a name, you can type in a, you know, a category, you can type in catalog 
numbers or international designators and immediately have that show up on the screen. And, and like you said, bef- the cool thing is this will work on your phone as well. Right. And that's, that's the amazing part. If somebody, when we started this effort uh, just about a year ago, if somebody had said, you will be able to, on your phone, propagate the full 18,000 object catalog at 30 frames a second, I probably would have said something I probably shouldn't say on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So that's uh, kind of it in a nutshell. I know we're, we've got a short time, but uh, obviously if you get in here and you're playing with it, you have questions, uh, just let me know. and be happy to help you. Yeah, it's awesome. looks really, really cool. Anthony, did you have anything to add to that? I, I love this personally. Uh, a lot of my friends will, they know that I'm a big space guy, and they'll ask me a lot of questions about satellites and orbits and things, and this is the number one thing that I pull out to show. You know, I'll just pick the ISS orbit or I'll show them uh, GOES satellites that show geostationary orbits. It's a really awesome tool to visualize it because it's so counterintuitive, right? We, we understand orbits because we're space nerds, but to everybody else, it's a very counterintuitive concept. So to be able to show all of this live uh, and then, you know, show truly how many things are up there, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite websites about space on the Internet. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks. See ya.